Yay, recording. I like recording. Recording's fun. Especially when it's about <laughs> topics we like. Oh, wait. That's always... <laughs> uh, hello, I'm Lux. And I'm Ember. And this is our thoughts on My Little Pony, French Was Magic, Season 5, Episode 18, Crusaders of the Lost Mark. Well, some people were kind of surprised about they got their cutie marks in this episode. I was not really surprised, but I was like, are they really going to do that? Oh, okay, they did. Also, this episode felt Discord levels of rush to me. Yes, once again, we had a very quick change of heart. Mm -hmm. It was like, I don't believe Diamond Tiara. I see the backstory you're going for, but could we have at least showed this particular part of the stuff? in another episode and then re-emphasize it again in this episode so we get some i don't know actual development not that here's information you need to know to feel sorry for her we're gonna change her heart there you go <laughs> it basically just felt like hey we're gonna give you this stuff so you can feel sympathetic for this character so when we actually show her change heart it actually matters i'm like no no you did it too quickly you should have put this in another episode or like all the episodes before this, any episode with Diamond Tiara in it where we actually see her interacting with uh, them. So we had some build-up and could have actually started caring about Diamond Tiara at this point. At this point, we didn't care about Diamond Tiara. She was a standard evil villain. You know, we didn't care. <laughs> yes, and Filthy Rich isn't stuck up like that. How in the name of Celestia did he marry someone like Diamond Tiara's mom? Well, my guess is Diamond Tiara's mom wasn't always that way, but then she married Filthy Rich. And was one of those people who go like, okay, I'm now married into wealth and power. I better act like it. You would think they would have some discussions about that kind of behavior, considering that Filthy Rich brought Time and Tierra to Sweet Apple Acres during the Zap Apple Jam episode and insisted that she needed to dress up in the bunny outfit just like Apple Bloom and play along to make the Zap Apple Jam because... You know, so much of his empire was based on selling Zap Apple Jam that he bought from Granny Smith. Yeah, this, this episode not only felt like it needed to be a two-parter, but it felt like, like I said before, this information needed to be drizzled out throughout lots of previous episodes. They could have been, even had just done it for this season, and I would have been okay with it. But because they crammed it all into this episode, this episode felt extremely rushed. And there were, I, it's not like I don't like music, but to me, there was too many songs in this episode for the information they needed to give you in this episode. <laughs> Yeah, this episode was basically a musical. Mm hmm But, like, that's enough of the negative stuff for me. <laughs> As I do a cute pose, which I fail at because I'm me. <laughs> Quite. But do you have any other negatives before I move on to my positives? <laughs> it was definitely Rush because we haven't seen any hints of this previously in Diamond Tiara's behavior. Or even in Silver Spoon, because Silver Spoon has always been Diamond Tiara's sycophant. So, I mean, I could see... Silver Spoon breaking away and finally having had enough. But if Silver Spoon and Diamond Tiara have been friends all this time, Silver Spoon should have had some awareness of what Diamond Tiara's home life was like. And we should, like, like I said before, we really should have seen bits and pieces of this information the entire time, at least, you know, at minimum this season. But there was like nothing really about that except maybe in the, um, I think it was season three, the episode where Scootaloo gets picked on specifically about how she may not ever fly. There was a little tiny bit of that with Silver Spoon in that episode, but it doesn't really give us um, what actually happened in this episode. And while we're at it, back at that point, you know, calling them blank flanks used to be the top thing in their repertoire for bringing the Cutie Mark Crusaders down. In that episode, it was proved that didn't work anymore. So why are we still using the blank flank T's clear in season five? and having the Cutie Mark Crusaders react to it so much. Because they kind of got over that. Now on to my positive. The episode's message was pretty good. Uh, the singing, even though I felt there was too much of it, all of the songs were pretty good. Um, especially Diamond Tiara, surprisingly enough. There were plenty of feels there if I cared more about the character. <laughs> yeah, it was like, if this was anybody else, I would probably be moved right now. Mm -hmm. But because I had no lead up into this to care about the character, the fact that you're giving it all to me now, eh, said that before. <laughs> and I'm okay with the design of the cutie marks that Crusaders got, especially since they actually can still call themselves cutie mark crusaders because they're crusading for other people's cutie marks. 
and helping them understand their cutie marks even if they even though they don't quite understand their cutie marks it's kind of like understanding what your talent's actually good for mm -hmm. and i had a bunch of other stuff but my brain's kind of burr. <laughs> Yeah, the cutie marks are a nice design. I like the shield look. I like the fact that they all have the same cutie mark, air quotes, because they are all different. They each have a different coat of arms. Mm -hmm. So it's still individual, not like going back to our precious town in the mountains where everyone's equal. To me, they looked a little bit small on their flanks. I mean, I know there's no set size for cutie marks, but considering it looks like a shield design, compare the relative size on their cutie marks to Shining Armor Shield. I think it's also the fact that the coloring in the cutie marks also make them visually appear smaller, and the fact of the way the stripes are make it hard to see at a distance the individual marks on the inside of the shields. That's the only like, real design problem I have with the cutie marks overall, but I like the fact that we keep their individuality inside the cutie marks, even though each one is a shield, but it's a shield with the personality. And I do like the fact that Diamond here hopefully won't be as evil, but I, I don't want her to be completely good now. I want her to still have, basically, I'm evil, but I'm using my powers of evil for good now. <laughs> so she'll still have that edge to her and not just be, I'm good now, look at me. <laughs> yeah, considering that her gift is to get other people to do what she wants, I'm like, there are so many places I could take that, but I choose Mega Tokyo, where great teacher Largo is asking his students what their skills are. And the one girl <laughs> says, I can get older men to give me money. <laughs> Largo's like, that is a powerful gift. We must use it carefully. <laughs> I thought maybe the guy in the guy or girl in the background, I have 5,000 friends on Facebook. <laughs> That's a talent, my friend. You maxed out Facebook. Congratulations. <laughs> and uh, now that we've got some more parentage on Diamond Tiara, how about show us the parents of Silver Spoon? And let's give us more information on Silver Spoon now. That would be awesome. It would, because, you know, she's been friends with Diamond Tiara all this time, and she did finally get fed up with Diamond Tiara, but did she get up fed, up, fed up with Diamond Tiara over this one instance? Or was it how she was treated the whole time? So was she okay with their friendship up to this point? Or was it one of those, you know, be friends with this person because they're in the right social circle? Mm -hmm. Also, I would love to find out what Silver Spoon's talent is. Her cutie mark's a silver spoon, so. Yes, because we had to make hers a play on wealth and status. I'm thinking she's an organizer slash planner slash creative talent. I'm thinking she comes up with all the plans and then Diamond Tiara just acts them out. Mm -hmm. And I do like we now have what Diamond Tiara's talent is. As you said, <laughs> I can get people to do what I want. That's scary. <laughs> oh, and I like the touch of that she takes the people she made fun of and actually uses their talents to help fix the playground. Yes. Though where is it embarrassing to be strong as Big Mac or Applejack? Mm-hmm. And I do like the touch that she was actually an Earth Pony, which is nice. Mm-hmm. It would only be unusually strong if she was a unicorn. Because <laughs> I always see unicorns are only strong in magic. Their physical prowess is like, oh god, this paper clip's so heavy! <laughs> well, if you lift everything by magic, then you don't ever build up your muscles. Mm-hmm. Though in Twilight's case, she's it's like, oh, paper clip! That's easy. Because <laughs> uh, use paper clips a lot in organizing, and I have a tw feeling Twilight does a combination of magic and physical work. Though, if we get what a Alicorn actually is, she now has Earth Pony strength naturally as well. <laughs> mm, not necessarily. Because if we want to put in grades of Alicorns, because current theory, shouldn't say current theory, because Journal of the Two Sisters is canon. Celestia and Luna are born Alicorns, where Twilight and Cadence are ascended Alicorns. So Celestia and Luna naturally have a mix of all three pony attributes. And now going into headcanon territory. <laughs> They are larger than the average pony. Cadence and Twilight are both smaller. One started as a unicorn, one started as a pegasi. Each one was granted the other portion. Cadence was granted a horn and Twilight was granted wings. So, headcanon theory, they only have two of the three attributes. Mm. So, 
they will still age normally and they're not as powerful. Hmm. And huh. wow, tangent. <laughs> yeah, well, this is our thoughts on the episode and the thoughts may go off into other territories they have to deal with the episode. <laughs> so any other thoughts on the episode? Was I the only one who thought fundraiser when Pipsqueak said there wasn't money in the school budget? <laughs> It was like instant thought. Okay, there's no money in the budget, then we have to do a fundraiser. Yeah, especially in this little group, I did not think that at all. You know, a group of me and you. <laughs> yeah, that was my first thought. My other thought on seeing the playground equipment is that stuff looks dangerous. Why hasn't it been condemned and hauled away? What kind <laughs> of school allows that type of dilapidated equipment to be used? should at least have keep off signs on it. Why are they allowing children to play on these things? Also, when did Discord break that window? <laughs> We'd have to go back and look, mm -hmm. assuming that's actually a true statement. Mm -hmm. Cause Discord and Derek were both mentioned in this episode. <laughs> yes. Derek, I can see a little more of having caused the damage because his was more brute force, where Discord was more just chaos. Mm -hmm. I was like, how did Discord break a window? You could see him turning the window into gelatin, but breaking it? And why didn't Fluttershy have him repair it? You know, because if he broke it, Fluttershy would ask him nicely to repair it, and he could do it instantly, so... <laughs> yeah, because he is a redeemed villain, unlike Chirac, who we just had to lock up. And I may have mentioned this before, but I, I do like how the fact that at the very end, uh, apparently a lot of people... It was a surprise the Cutie Mark Crusaders got their Cutie Marks at the end of this episode. I'm like, I kind of saw where this was going, but I didn't really think that they might do it right now. But this works. Oh, and going back to how we actually wanted one of them to get their Cutie Mark first. <laughs> we were talking about, uh, so how should the Cutie Mark Crusaders get their Cutie Marks? And we were thinking that it would be a better and more interesting dynamic if one of them got their Cutie Marks first and then the others um, kind of worked around that. Yes, but you see, they already explored that through the avenue of the nightmares that the three of them had about getting their cutie marks. Therefore, they didn't have to actually address it in an episode. The three of them wanted to stay together and continue to be friends and hang out, and that's what they got in their cutie marks. Not that their cutie marks would mean that they couldn't be friends anymore, but they're still united by a common cause. And now they need to start an agency and start hiring on agents to help them go out and find people who have cutie marks they do not understand. I smell a spinoff! Ah, <sighs> sweet Celestia now. <laughs> So shall we wrap things up? Yes, I can only unbelieve so many things. <laughs> oh, and we almost forgot. We even talked about in the last one, whoops, that they gave us a pretty nice hint that the Apple family parents are deceased. <laughs> At least more direct than they have before. Yes, because before it could have been open either way. You know, it could have been like Dave the Barbarian's parents, where they're just off traveling the world fighting evil, but... They wouldn't get all teary-eyed going, your parents would be so proud if only they could see this. That usually makes it pretty clear that there is not a parent around. And we absolutely never see Scootaloo's parents, so we could possibly have two out of three, I know Babs is one too, but two of the three original Cutie Mark Crusaders as orphans because we never see Scootaloo's family or any discussion about Scootaloo's family. And, you know, Scootaloo always gravitates to Rainbow Dash, which means she isn't getting the support she needs in her own family. Apple Bloom at least has the rest of the Apple family, and by the rest of the Apple family, I literally mean the rest of the Apple family. <laughs> and this is Cousin Toaster Strudel Apple. We don't talk about him. <laughs> uh, though we could have the parents being presumed dead because they've been missing because of some incident that happened. Yes, and they could actually be alive, more like the whole Hey Arnold thing. Mm -hmm. Or we could go with the, they've been missing and Applejack's adventuring around the country and Applejack finds them, but they don't remember who they were. This is why they haven't been seen and assumed dead because they've been living lives after recovering from the memory. Or like one of the parents survived whatever happened to them and that parent has lost their memory. So we could do that too. Mm -hmm. All entirely possible. Uh, at the very least, they are presumed dead, and it has now been clearly stated, though obviously it was mostly glossed over because 
we almost forgot about it. Mm hmm And this has been our thoughts on My Little Pony, Friendship is Magic, Season 5, Episode 18, Crusaders of the Lost Mark. And no Temple Dungeon? Seriously? <laughs> yeah, there should have been a dream about a boulder chasing them. Wait a minute. No, wait. Wrong movie. Um <laughs> <laughs> Thanks for listening. If you like Lex's art, you can find more of it on DeviantArt and Tumblr. Really enjoy listening to us blather on? Try subscribing. Also, comment sections there. Please be nice. Really, really like Lux's art? He does take commissions. And also has a Patreon. All links in the description.